I recently read Thinking in Bets by Annie Duke. In the game of poker, a professional like Annie Duke can lose to a player who's making worse decisions. But if Annie continues to make high-quality decisions over the course of many games, she will come out ahead. The same is true in life. When you invest your money, you might get unlucky with one or two investments and lose money. But if you consistently make high-quality decisions over the course of many years, you will exceed your financial goals and stop worrying about money. If you consistently make high-quality decisions in your career, you might get unlucky and laid off in a downturn or get passed over for a promotion. But in the long run, you'll find a role that suits you and have a rich and fulfilling career. In Thinking in Bets, Annie Duke explains principles from the game of poker that we can apply to our everyday decisions to greatly increase the quality of our decisions and thereby increase the quality of our lives. The first principle is to see every decision you make as a bet. Think of a future prediction you're fairly certain of. Maybe you're certain the stock market will continue to go up or down. Maybe you're certain that a book you've recently purchased will be enjoyable. Maybe you're certain the project you're working on will be successful. Or maybe you're sure who will win the next presidential election. Now imagine someone walking up to you and saying, want to bet? That person is asking you to wager a significant amount of money on your assumptions. If you're like most people, you'll start to second guess your assumptions and beliefs for fear of losing that bet. You might wonder, what information am I missing? What does this person know that I don't? How might I be wrong? When a poker player like any Duke thinks she has the winning hand, she's forced to bet on that hand, and that in turn makes her a better decision maker. She stops herself from carelessly pushing all her chips into the pot and starts to accurately assess her beliefs and assumptions. The first step to increasing the quality of our decisions is to increase the accuracy of our beliefs and assumptions. Every decision we make is biased. That's the price we pay for being a human being. But by imagining someone has just bet a significant amount of money against you, you start considering your biases and thinking of ways that you could be wrong, which helps adjust your beliefs to be more in line with reality. Maybe you were 99% sure of an outcome, but after imagining that someone's just bet against you, you're 75% sure. But now that you're less certain about the future, how can you be confident that you're making the right decision? Poker players face this question all the time, and they have an easy answer. If a bet, that is a decision, has a positive expected value, then it's a good bet. Let me show you what I mean. If you were playing a hand of Texas Hold'em poker with eight other players, after several rounds of betting, it's down to you and one other player. There is $150 in the pot that you could win, and you believe that there is a 40% chance that your opponent is bluffing based on your opponent's past behavior. If your opponent bets $50, making the pot $200, what should you do? Well, since you have a 40% chance of winning $200, your expected value is 40% of 200, which is $80. Since the expected value of $80 is greater than the $50 you need to invest, you should call his bet because you have a positive expected value. If you call and your opponent turns over the winning hand, proving he wasn't bluffing, you should still be confident that you made the right decision. Because if you made that same decision in that same situation a million times, you would make money. The same logic can apply to your life. If you calculate the expected value for decisions in your life, you can be confident that you're making the right decision. You just need to determine three things. First, What's the potential reward? This isn't always money. Sometimes it can be emotional, like more joy or more satisfaction. Second, what's the likelihood I will get this reward? Use the degree of certainty you approximated after imagining that someone was betting against you. Maybe you think there's a 25% chance of getting what you want, or an 80% chance of getting what you want. Then third, how much of my limited resources do I need to commit to get that potential reward? Here it's best to consider opportunity costs. If you need to commit a certain amount of time and money to get an expected value, determine what else you could get with that same time and money. For example, if you're about to invest two hours of your time to watch a movie, plus $15 to see the movie, think about all the other things that you could do for two hours and $15. You could take a guitar lesson online. You could go for coffee with a friend. You could pay for an Apple Music subscription and listen to new music for the next two hours. 
Once you have a rough idea of the potential reward, the likelihood of getting that reward, and the investment you need to make to get that reward, you can confidently make a decision if your investment is less than the expected value, the potential reward times the likelihood. To improve the accuracy of your expected value, and thereby improve the quality of your decisions, you must find and fix inaccuracies in past decisions. When most people look for faulty decisions they've made, they only look at their bad outcomes. For a poker player, this means only reflecting on the hands they've lost. But the difference between a good player and a great player is that a great player not only finds mistakes in hands they lost, they also find mistakes in hands they won. In the book, Amy Duke says, In 2004, my brother, Howard Letter, provided televised final table commentary for a tournament in which Phil Ivey smoked a star-studded final table. After his win, the two of them went to a restaurant for dinner, during which Ivey deconstructed every potential playing error he thought he might have made on the way to victory. A more run-of-the-mill player might have spent the time talking about how great they played, relishing the victory. Not Ivy. For him, the opportunity to learn from his mistakes was much more important than treating that dinner as a self-satisfying celebration. He earned half a million dollars and won a lengthy poker tournament over world-class competition, but all he wanted to do was discuss with a fellow pro where he might have made better decisions. Like Ivy and other great poker players, we must analyze our decisions regardless of the outcome. Because the fact is, we can make a terrible decision and still get a good outcome. I could buy a stock based on a hunch or start a business without doing any market research and get lucky and make money. But if I use that same haphazard approach to future decisions, I will undoubtedly lose a lot of money in the future. If you don't take the time to critically assess faulty judgments that resulted in a good outcome, you'll reinforce those faulty judgments and set yourself up for a future disaster. That's why it's important to develop the following habit. When you get a good result in life, find at least two mistakes you made and admit them to a friend, a coworker, or your partner. Not only will this keep you level-headed, it will also help you make the shift from being results-focused to process-focused. You'll stop seeking short-term gains and increase your odds of long-term success. Admitting mistakes is hard, but admitting mistakes you've made en route to a victory is much easier than talking about mistakes that led to a loss. In the end, to improve the quality of your decisions, imagine someone with an opposing point of view asking you to bet on your beliefs. When you imagine having to gamble a significant amount of money on the assumptions and beliefs guiding your decision, you naturally pause and vet those assumptions and beliefs. You start thinking of ways in which you might be wrong, and this helps you adjust your degree of certainty which helps you better predict the likelihood of a favorable result. Now you can take that likelihood to calculate the expected value, that is what you stand to gain, multiplied by the probability of it occurring. Once you know your expected value, you can be confident you made the right decision if the value of what you need to commit is less than the expected value. And lastly, evaluate your decisions, regardless of the outcome. Look for a minimum of two beliefs that need adjusting. If you can improve the accuracy of your beliefs, you'll make better decisions. When you increase the quality of your decisions, you increase the quality of your life. That was the core message that I gathered from Thinking in Bets by Annie Duke. Thinking in Bets will fundamentally change the way you look at the world. I highly recommend it. If you would like a one-page PDF summary of insights that I gathered from this book, just click the link below and I'd be happy to email it to you. If you already subscribed to the free Productivity Game email newsletter, this PDF is sitting in your inbox. If you like this video, please share it. And as always, thanks for watching and have yourself a productive week.